Uh, welcome to another edition of Lab Rats. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And are you okay, Andy Walker? <laughs> yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right. Long day here at Lab Rats Central. Yes. Partly because Sean's been drinking a lot of beer. It's not true. That's true. It's not true. But that's it. Despite the distraction, despite the spiky hair, we're going to show you a really cool thing today. It's called refurbing your iPod. I'm all up for that. Because the iPod traditionally is a, dispos a disposable technology. A disposable technology. Disposable, yes. In the sense that it's factory sealed, right? Apple makes these, these cute little players, and they seal them. And then what happens is a couple years down the road, the batteries go or the hard drives goes Yeah, sometimes within a year even. Right. And this is a, something that a lot of technologies have done, not just Apple. You've got the, uh, say, we've got this BlackBerry here, and you've got the back and you've got a battery that's accessible here right. inside this, and you can replace it anytime you like. But there's a, a growing number of devices that actually have sealed cases. You can't get into them. You can't replace the battery. Nothing. So, AKA this iPod Mini right yes. here. Yes. There is no way to, well, no obvious way anyway, to get the end caps off and get to the battery or whatever it is. That it's looks, sealed. That's, that's sealed. a locked box there. So, on today's episode of Lab Rats, we're going to show you mm -hmm. how to refurb your iPod even though. Apple says it's not refurbable. Refurbable. I thought you said I was drinking. <laughs> I just can't pronounce that word. Refurbable. On Lab Rats, here in Lab Rats Land. Let's uh, take a commercial and then come back to this after you've sobered up. <laughs> Absolutely. Take a look at this. This is a llama. It carries luggage. This is a burrito. It is lunch. This is Camtasia Studio 4. It makes screencasts. Now answer our trivia question. What screencasting tool is not woolly or made of beans? I'll be back at the end of the show with the answer. So, refurbing... <laughs> I just can't say it. Refurbishing... Your iPod, here's what I'm going to show it's, you what to do, how to do it. Something about the letter B. Something about the letter B today, yeah. But the good news is that I get to use a... There is help. There is help, and it's, it uh, comes in the form of a hairdryer. Oh, that's so nice. Yes. Thankfully, I put uh, white glue in my hair earlier today, so this little trickery am, won't affect me. I am stunned by how spiky your hair is today. It is crazy. It's, it's actually lethal. Okay, so... That said, <laughs> speaking of lethal, uh, let's refurb an iPod. Yeah, so this is a huge, huge problem with, with iPods. They, uh, they make these things as closed cases. You can see on this uh, device right here, it's got uh, a nice, beautiful front and a nice, beautiful back, and no real obvious way to open it up and replace the battery. In right. It. There is, however, a way, and that's the same with all of these iPod cases. Yes. So. Um, How do we do it? How do we open them? Well, the what's gonna well, so first of all, there are lithium-ion batteries inside these guys, right? Right. So um, that's one of the nice things with uh, older gadgets. You used to use AA batteries, you know, typical things that you could pick up at the drugstore and replace sure. at will. Um, unfortunately, AA batteries, typical alkaline batteries, didn't hold enough of a charge. They wouldn't last as long. So what right. a lot of these gadget manufacturers decided to do is put a built-in lithium-ion battery and put it into the case. That is rechargeable. That is rechargeable. So you don't have to go through a whole bunch of batteries and waste the environment by just throwing these batteries out mm. after like a couple of hours of use. Right. Um, in this case, you can just use the battery that's built in, recharge it. Unfortunately, there's only so many charges in lithium ion batteries. Before. Approximately how many, do you know? Any idea? A thousand, Thousands. a couple thousand. Couple yeah, thousand, it, yeah, it depends yeah. on the device. I figure if you charge it every day mm -hmm. for a year, that's 365 charges. Mm -hmm. Over two years, it's like, you know, 600 odd charges. Mm -hmm. Minus the days that you don't take it on holiday or whatever. So, right. Yeah. So it makes sense. And what's been happening is the iPod batteries have been failing after a year, mm -hmm. you know, a regular use or even a couple of years, and that's that sort of thing. Yeah, going by the, the, the theoretical maximum number of charges you have on these, some of these batteries have been failing way earlier than you think they should. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, when the case is sealed, as we have in the case of these, these iPods here, where there's no obvious way to replace the batteries, it's essential you've got a brick here. These things are worth nothing at this point. Right, absolutely. But the good news is that there is a way to do it. Mm -hmm. And as Gary pointed out, I said, 
refurb your uh, iPod, but it's actually a home refurb your iPod. Mm -hmm. Now Gary, of course, is our programmer, Gary Marriott. That's and right. He has uh, provided the iPods here, and mm -hmm. he and has... And he's been doing a lot of this work. Yeah, he's, he's actually taken them apart himself. Right. So it looks kind of scary. So you've got this sealed device. How do you take it apart? It right. looks like you're going to break it. Right. There is a way. So to show us, Sean. I thought you were going to show <laughs> us. All right, all right. Well, I, I mean, I, do, I don't know exactly how to do this, but I'm going to take a stab at it. So first of all, uh, all these uh, devices have, end, well, in this particular case, this is the iPod Mini. It has end caps. I don't know if you can mm -hmm. see that there, Gary. It has an end cap on this side, mm -hmm. and it looks kind of sealed, and it has an end cap on this side as well. Yeah, actually, I'm playing coy because we've actually done this before on Call for Help. Yeah. So Matt uh, Harris, uh, the producer, or the, the associate producer on Call for Help, now the producer on Live with Leo, he had an iPod that died, essentially. The battery just, no good. Mm -hmm. So you recharge it too many times. So um, he and Amber did a segment on Call for Help uh, uh, about a year ago where they took apart the end caps of this yeah. and replaced it. Now there was a company that we used at that point called Sonnet Technologies. Sonnet, yeah. Right, and they had not only a battery, but a uh, little how to do this. So A little kit. A little kit. Yeah. And uh, Gary has shown us this one called Newer Technology, right. which is roughly similar, the same sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Apparently Sonnet has a how to uh, DVD, how to do this, and, right. and Newer Technology is a bit cheaper, but it has the basic thing you need, the battery and the it comes with tools. a couple of tools, right? It comes with a couple of screwdrivers. Right. right. And, and these are to actually help you pry off the end caps. Right. So and should we do that? Yeah, so we... Sort of, kind of? Well, well we're, we're going to show you one that's already done, but uh, the trick to these things is most of these um, technologies here, in this case, the iPod Mini has an end cap on here, and it's got glue keeping this on. And what you need is the hair dryer. So... Low settings. Low settings. Low settings. So you don't, low settings. you don't want to overdo this, but if you use the sun low, what you're going to do is you're going to loosen the glue on these right. a little bit, and at that point, you'll be able to pry the end caps off with uh, the tool that's provided. Now, new power or the newer technology, new power iPod replacement battery here has metal tools, and that's, don't necessarily want to use metal to do these off because you can actually damage the parts. Mm -hmm. And I believe Sonnet has uh, tools that comes with their kit as well that are plastic, They're and you plastic. can use them to pry the ends off of this right. in a gentle kind of way. So the idea here is to basically get an edge underneath one of these guys. Mm -hmm and to jimmy it open. Now, as you can mm -hmm. see, I've got an end cap that's been pulled off here, mm -hmm. right? And if you flip on the other side there, you can see there's a bunch of glue. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the reason why we want to use a, a hairdryer on a low setting is to s basically soften that glue mm -hmm. so that we can now, now you have to be gentle. As you can see, these guys have little teeth that kind of grab here, and you don't want to be breaking those at all. So there mm -hmm. you go. So once you get the ends off, then it exposes the, uh, the iPod mini, um, mm -hmm. and you can actually slide all the technology mm -hmm. out. You know, it's not just as simple as sliding it out. There's, there's a few little things like, um, as Gary points out, there's a little metal plate in the bottom of this one that mm -hmm. uh, that holds it into place. Right. And you do have to slide things out. So, two screws uh, as well. There's two screws. Two and, screws. On the top end here, there's two screws on both right. sides. So, so we're not going to go over all of the details on this, but we'll right. show you how to do that. Oh, you probably don't want to do that. Well, you, you take it out for me. Okay, so there we go. in the end, what you want to do once you've taken the end plates off mm -hmm. with the hair dryer right. and softened them up and removed the screws on the other side, is the whole section will actually slide right out. Wow. So now we've got, instead of this sealed case, which is sort of a mystery black box of technology. Well, blue box in this you've, case. You've got this thing, and it looks more like real technology. It's got right. the circuit board and the screen and all that. But on this the back. iPod undressed. iPod undressed. Right. It's naked here, so we we seeing the the various components in here, and you see on the back the majority of this is the micro drive, which right. is the storage for all of your data, right? Plus the battery, right? Okay, very good. And the battery just basically you you slip it off, mm -hmm. and there's a little connector here, and you unclip it, yeah, like this. So you have to be uh, you have to be a little bit careful here, but there's a, there's a pretty much pull standardized right tabs. Just pull it straight out. There we go. And there we go. And there you go, there's your dead battery. Type by battery. So that's the old battery, not so good. And uh, with these iPod kits that you get, you have a replacement battery that right. is roughly the same shape that goes into the same place and it connects to the same little battery same connector report, yeah. that's right here. Now, these kits cost about uh, $20 or so uh, via, uh, if, you, if you order them on the internet, um, if you buy them at a local store. No, now you're going to pay for 10 or $20 in shipping. Mm -hmm. To get them to you, so you know, you look at it, thirty or forty dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, if you buy at a local store, it turns out it's forty dollars carry locally. So, 
Um, either way, it's going to run you about thirty or forty dollars to get a replacement kit. And there you go. S simple so, as that. That was okay. actually pretty simple. Yeah, very good. Now you just slip that back in. Put mm -hmm. the end. Now, how would you put the end caps back on? Well, the end caps, uh, because they're glue, you need to sort of glue them back on a little bit. Uh, so in this case, we would take this, we would put this end cap back on, screw it back into place, and then put the end caps back on mm -hmm. and, and just line them up. Mm -hmm. So again, we've got instructions uh, that we're going to link to online that show you how to do this. Right, very good. Okay, good. Now, is there a particular kind of glue, Gary? Double-sided carpet tape. Double-sided carpet tape. That's one way to do it. Okay, well, there you go. Tape. All right. So now the interesting thing about this is, you see when you have this out, you actually have access to the micro drive Microdrive too, well. yeah, absolutely. And according to our man Gary, who has done this, you can actually remove this micro drive mm -hmm. from here mm -hmm. and replace it with another flash drive. So, right. for example, this one was an old four gigabyte drive. You can actually replace this with a higher capacity one, like another four gigabyte drive. So if the drive fails, yeah. uh, which is another problem with some of these, you can replace it with another drive that's a flash memory instead of the old micro drive, which is mechanical. Right. So this one, you drop it, bang, it's gone. It's gone, yeah. yeah. So you can replace it with flash memory so that you don't have that problem. And the flash memory the, uh, is CF2, Compact Flash version 2. Mm -hmm. um, it, it uh, I think, comes up to what? Is it, it's like 10, 20, 12, 16 megabyte, uh, gigabytes now? Um, yes, the highest one I've seen so far has been 10 gigabytes, but it's going up all the time. Um, so you have to make sure that uh, the machine that you've got here will actually recognize a device of that high capacity. Right. Uh, but if it does, then just stick that in, and um, when you plug it back in and reformat it, um, it, w it will automatically say, this is not initialized, would you like to reinitialize it? Bang, it'll put the software back on it, and away you go. You've right. got a higher capacity drive. So, okay, so you're putting well. so a blank compact flash mm -hmm. to replacement disk in here. Mm -hmm. You're reassembling your iPod. You plug it back into iTunes, either on Windows or on the Mac. Mm -hmm. And iTunes will discover that it's not formatted mm -hmm. and will actually reformat it, it and then put the iPod software on, on, mm -hmm. on the actual drive itself. Yes, it will. Now, we, I haven't done this personally, and Sean hasn't done this personally, but our man Gary has, and he says, have you? No, he hasn't, but he, we, he's seen on the internet mm -hmm. people that do it. So we're going to put a URL here to find out more about that. Internet, um, eh? Hmm. Uh, so that you can learn a little bit more of that, and you may want to try it yourself. Um, and any final thoughts before we uh, wrap this thing up? Yes, well, Gary has uh, thoughtfully provided us with these Swiss Army knives. And yes. He says, do not use these to pry open your iPod because it'll end in tragedy. So you can get this knife out and, and start going at this, but it's not a really good idea. I, again, because this is metal and you want something soft to get this off, uh, theoretically, uh, when you get to this... Uh, particular thing from newer technology, it comes with a little screwdriver which you can use to pry it off. Sonnet will give you a little, a little plastic, plastic prior. one as well. Right. But don't don't just go at it with uh, with any knife that you see kicking around. Yeah, you'll get it off, but you may never get it back on again. Right. Very so good. Follow the instructions carefully, folks, and right. uh, maybe you can replace that battery. One thing that is worth mentioning is that a lot of these kits, in addition to replacing the battery, will also increase the battery life on there. So beforehand, you used to have a battery that would last you for six hours, and mm -hmm. maybe now it'll last you for oh. eight or 10. Um, the battery that came inside here initially was only a certain rating, and the, the right. new ones that you can get are higher. So, so that not only will you refurb yeah. your uh, iPod, but you would improve in the refurb yes. as well. All right, well, let's take a break. And when we come back, final thoughts, plus a few more of your photographs. <laughs> Earlier in the show, we asked you what screencasting product is not woolly or made of beans. Is it A, a llama, B, a burrito, or C, Camtasia Studio 4? The answer is Camtasia Studio 4. Learn more at labrats.techsmith.com. So now you know how to refurb your iPod at home, and you have all the tools. Turn it off! Turn it off! To uh, make yourself pretty as well. No, I can hear you now. Is it better? Turn it back on. Shut that up. Anyway, uh, so um, I think then now we should look at pictures of Flabrad's <coughs> fans. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good idea. Now that we're done our iPod refurb. Yes. All right, good. Who's this? This is Zeph. He's from Battle Creek, Michigan, and he actually wrote in to tell us how much he likes the ads that we have. Yay! So I have a feeling 
he knows who TechSmith is. I think he Being from does. Michigan. That's true. They're in Lansing. And you know what, Zeph? We like TechSmith ads, we too. We do. We do. It allows mm -hmm. us to bring you this show every week. Uh, and also, I think, the, actually, you know what people are saying, too, is mm. that they like the cats in the ads. They do? We like that, too. So Even thanks. if they're peeing on your pillow. <laughs> Even if they're peeing on my pillow. Thank you, uh, Zeph. Okay. Yes. A quick uh, note is this one was taken accidentally in a restaurant. <laughs> and the there we go. So we have a photograph of Zeph. Thank you, the Zeph. Accidental, the accidental photographer. Yeah, sometimes I find those photographs that were taken best. accidentally are the best they photographs the best. in the whole world. Right. So there we go. Who else? So we have Nicholas from uh, Brazil. and <laughs> He's got his fur coat on. He's got his fur coat on. And his on. brother's there. And you know, uh, another one in our series of photographs from our viewers that don't include our viewers. These are monkeys <laughs> that actually Nicholas owns. In, oh. in, in Nicholas is in Brazil. I don't know whether I said that. So Hey, well, we have a big Brazil contingent. We do, it's, and I love that. I love uh, the fact that we have people stationed all around the world. Brazil, Australia, wherever. Mm, Keep bimini. sending us photographs. Mm -hmm. But put yourself Angola. in the yeah. Angola. Do we have Angolan viewers? I think we have somebody from Angola. Okay. okay. Cape Canaveral. That's not know. Angola. No, it's not. Anyways, this is from Nicholas in Brazil, and he wanted to show us his monkeys. Yay. And I guess uh, these are Andy's fans. <laughs> so there we go. That's the president and vice president of the Andy Walker Fan Club. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so thank you, Nicholas, for sending that photograph in. And keep sending them to feedback at libras.tv. Very good. Very Don't good. make them over a megabyte, but uh, maybe keep them up above uh, 100K because then we can actually see them without them pixelating and you looking like you're made up of tiles. Tiles, that's right. And uh, just to compensate for the Apple-centric uh, nature of this show, don't forget my uh, new book, the Windows Vista Help Desk, is out oh, great. Uh, any day now. In fact, uh, yeah, it's probably going to be in bookstores tomorrow or yesterday. I'm not sure which. It's no Harry Potter because... Uh, it is. It's, it's 539 pages of Vista deliciousness. No, it is. Windows Vista Help Desk to your local bookstore. Check it out on release date at 12.01 a.m. Right, line up, Nathan. There will be a huge lineup for this one. <laughs> All right. All right. That's another edition of Lab Rats uh, in the can and probably where it belongs. Yes. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for downloading. Are you ready? Microphone. My microphone, what about my, where, where is my microphone? Oh, you know what? Mine has been under my shirt. <laughs> I think we need to do the whole episode again. Yes, right from the very right beginning. The <laughs> no, don't rewind, don't rewind, just leave it where it is. Just leave it. These bloopers will be super fantastic. Without sound, it'll be, we have to just, just put in a little love. Well, there'll be sound, it'll just be muffled. This will be proof for generations to come that we were complete screw-ups.